Hi, my name is Todd Lamley, and in this section we're going to continue on with the configuration of our Firepower Management Center. Let's take a look at the tasks we're about to do. So when I go to a customer, the first thing, well, I usually call them and say, hey man, <laughs> install your FMC. We're not talking rocket science here. I think you guys, you guys saw that, right? The second thing I do is I have them do before I come in is install the license, install the license. Okay, so we're going to do that next. So what I'm going to show you is when I work at a customer, which I've been doing for years, I will have them do, I'm going to go step by step by step by step, and this includes the policies, everything I do at a real life customer. None of this is just fluff in a class to show you features. I'm going to show you what it is in the real world, what I do every day. So let's take a look at our FMC that we just installed. We went through that splash screen. Now there's no configuration on here except for the IP address. Now in this case here, we can come up here and look that we have to be HTTPS. We only listen on port 443 and 22. I put the IP address in, it comes to this status page, but we need to configure this first. Now on the left hand side is our day to day activities, right? This is where we configure our policies. This is where we do analysis of our policies. So this is our day to day and over here, where we deploy our policies out to our devices. We see our tasks and our, the status of them and our health. And then here though, is where we configure our FMC. So we're gonna start here. And the first thing I wanna do here is as I mentioned, licensing. We'll take a look at Classic, although we won't use them because I'm only gonna do FTD here. I'm not gonna do um, ASA with Firepower, Meraki with Firepower, or anything like that. So notice, notice I have no licenses here. There is a, uh, FMC, this is kind of our, what used to be called Firesight licensing of hosts and users of our database, but now it's called Firepower Network Discovery. We'll get back to that. <clears throat> so we could do classic licenses. And the thing you guys need here though, hold on. You need this, no, this number here. It looks like a Mac address, it's actually seven bytes. So, but if I look at this, I'm gonna copy this, then I'll say get license and I'll go out and I should be able to download it. This could be efforting though, and it could take some time, which is why I have my customers do it before I back before I come out. In this place here, though, um, I've got a license for my FTD. I've got a token. So one of the things I'm going to smart license and nicely, there's a uh, 90 day, 45 day, I think it is, evaluation mode. Now the problem with this, and there is one, is this is to try features, um, and then um, you can just do it again and keep doing it. However we don't get exportable features. So remote access is not available. So we absolutely want to register using a token. So I'm going to click register here. Now this is new with 623. Okay, this six Cisco success network, whatever, I'm not going to do it, you knock yourself out. But that's, that's brand new, but I need to get my token to put in here. That gives me my license and my feature. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to open a new tab and go to my license notice. I'm very, um, re I'm ready to go here, guys, right? So anyways, you come out to uh, software.cisco.com and then log in. You'll see my cache login here. And uh, just let me know if you guys need the password for that. Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, uh, and then we're gonna come over here to smart software licensing. And then, this isn't always easy to find either, right? And first off, they've been changing this lately or in the last, especially the last couple of years. So I'm gonna come over here and hit inventory. Hopefully they've kind of mellowed out and stopped changing things all the time. And then we'll see some stuff based on the licenses. Um, I have some in here. Here's, here's one here that I was using. Basically, this was a demo token that I have and I'm not using it anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and revoke it from that FMC. Revoke token free up my tokens. If not, you get all these, <laughs> these warnings. Hey, but I'm just going to say new token. Perfect. Now this is a demo token based on my CCO licensing and I can get it up to 365 days. Uh, and if you're just in a lab or something, that's what it's for. So I'm going to say FMC 19. I'm going to go ahead and create this token. Now there is a caveat to this and when we get to the health policies. I'll show you what you have to do if you're using this token. There's my new token. Um, and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to right click. Now you can control C at times, not on mine here. I'm going to control C. There's the token. Very nice. Pretty simple. Once you find the page, and I'm going to come back over here and paste it in. And now I have my token. Now, if you bought it and your token should be there already. So again, this can be efforting at times. I find this 
as a problem for my customers a lot, but it's not going to be for us today. The one thing we'll see before the end of this section is my health. My health. This says, hey, man, you got perfect health uh, for now, right? I've got an FMC with no config, but the minute I put this token on there, it's going to say, um, you're out of compliance because you haven't paid for it. It's a demo license, but whatever. Anyways, so there's my license. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Now, what's the next thing? So install the license, and we'll spend more time on that after I bring my device in. Now I want to configure my system config. Now I'm writing this down, and I'll just keep writing here. I'm writing this down because, again, I'll mention this is exactly what I do with every customer. And when we get to our ACP and everything else, I'll show you all the basic rules, the foundation that I build. So once we got our license, now these say zero. That doesn't mean you don't have any. That means you have no devices. In this demo license, the virtual FMC can have up to 25 devices in here, right? So that's how much a virtual can take. I'm looking good right now. Now, if something happens, I download something, it doesn't show up, I can just click this and talk to the license server again. You need to talk to it. Now on here, we're going to get back to our health policies and health monitor. Uh, but we want to do our configuration. We'll create users. We'll do domains. Um, integration is important. That's with our AD and our uh, ICE with PX Grid. And we'll do our updates. Remember in that splash screen, it said, hey, you want to do the updates? No, we're going to do it by hand from here. So I'm going to start here, though. And this actually takes a, quite a few minutes to get through. So get some air. Okay. Now, you guys ready? So when I come in here, I end up on the default information page. And we can change our host name our fully qualified name. Now, the first thing we can do is the access list. Now, I got to tell you guys something. If you've done this with passcodes 52, 53, 54, right? I've been going for a long time. Anything in the six code, it took a long time to do these screens. You had to sit here and it's been 623 is much faster, much faster. So I can get through this section. Um, so we can add rules here. Now, the one thing I want to show you is who can come in. Notice we only listen on SSH, HTTPS. This might as well say 22 and 443. Right, this is 161. I can go ahead and put an SNMP NMS manager in, but since I don't have it configured yet, it won't take it here. We'll come back to this. So if I cancel this, what you guys really want to do here is maybe delete these. And what this does is it's going to, you can put in a host that says, hey, who can get into this FMC? But be careful, you can log yourself, lock yourself out. And as soon as you say save, man, you might reinstall from a backup or do a new install of FMC, but you're going to be locked out. Now, I had a customer that did that. They called Cisco. They went into the console and did something, got it fixed, but that might take a couple hours. So be careful. We'll come back to this after I do my um, SNMP config. Now, so I'm going to come here to process. Now, I don't do this with a virtual FMC. I will not do this. What I'm going to do here is if I have a hardware, I would do a shutdown. Remember, you can't turn it on from here. You can shut it down. I can reboot it, restart the FMC. But if I'm in a virtual one, I would do that from vCenter. But if I have my 2500 or 4500, then there you go. Now, the audit log is interesting, and I try to get all my customers to do this and my, all my students. I obviously do quite a few classes. But what this has to do is with this here. I want you to show you something, a trick here. I'm always opening things in new tabs. You're going to learn that relatively quickly when you're doing this FMC, although it's much faster now. Um, so if you guys have seen the past and you're watching this for the first time, you're like, holy crap, that's fast. And it is. But notice what's happening here. If this was Bob and he was an admin, he says, oh my gosh, I just brought down the entire network. Um, well, um, I'm just going to delete this and, you know, hey, it's happy hour. So, you know, I deleted that. I'm good. I'm not going to get fired now. So it's gone. Right. So what you want to do is you have some basic admins. Now, if you only have one or two admins, this may not be that important to you. But if you have a few, what we want to do is send this to a secure audit log. So I'm going to send this to a syslog and I have one. And I'm going to say the facility now. This isn't a syslog class. So I'm not going to talk about these. Uh, so you have to choose that. The tag is um, <clears throat> vendor information. So I can add that. The rest of this I'll leave. And then you hit save. On every one, on every one of these screens, you're going to hit save. And by the way, it immediately takes effect. That's why if you did the access list, put it in wrong and hit save, it immediately took effect. Login banner we absolutely need, right? You're just going to copy and paste in what you guys have for your security um, uh, uh, um, policy. Uh, this is my FMC 19. If you're not allowed, please disconnect immediately, blah, blah, blah. That's up to you. Now, the change reconciliation one, oops, uh, the change reconciliation one, 
I definitely use at some banks. I don't know anyone that actually reads this data and it's a little cumbersome. Let me explain. First off, you have to have your email. Here you go right here. Email notification set up your SMTP, which we'll do shortly. But you enable this now. You say, I want to um, just show the change history. I don't care about policy, but you have to set up your relay before this would work. No big deal. I'm not going to use this. Now, this doesn't say, if I set this to eight, this doesn't say uh, run at eight. That would be kind of nice. So some of my banks, they, they use this and they keep this for their audits and whatnot. But uh, basically what this says is, hey, run every 23 hours. Most I can make this run in 50 minutes. So if you think you're losing 10 minutes a day on these and <laughs> whatever. But um, I don't like the way that they do this, but it's there in case you guys need it. And then the actual reports aren't that great. <clears throat> it's up to you. Now, the DNS cache and, and dashboard, these are kind of left over from the old appliance days, so um, I don't use those. The database one, I want you to be careful, and I want you to, if you're um, going to do something here, probably have Cisco on the phone, and certainly don't blame me <laughs> if you change something here and say save, and then you have a problem. Anyways, I don't change most of these. Again, you would change these if Cisco was on the phone and they said, hey, change this. Now, if you had a larger... FMC. Now, if you had read my blog about how to get the virtual FMC virtually faster, that's what it's called. Um, one of the things you can realize is you can get 49 million events on a virtual FMC, and this has to do with your access control policy logging. Now, in this case here, it's only a million by default. I usually come in here and change this to 10 million at least, right? Depends on the FMC. If you have a 4,500, I think it's 250 million events. The other thing is you got like IPS events. Well, I got to tell you something here. There's a million events. You have a million IPS events. You have other problems in worrying about this page. But, you know, I'm going to at least change this one. I don't think I'll change the rest without maybe talking to Cisco. We'll see. Now, in this case here, external database, you can do storage. You have malware storage pack and so on. I don't really use this one, uh, but you can see that there's some different options here. You can add a host in here for storage. Um, but I'm going to show you another one for backups. So we're not going to use that one. Under the email notification. Now we'll get this one working. And I recommend in production that you absolutely get this working. So I'm going to say smtp.gmail.com. Obviously, you don't want to use this one for um, <clears throat> your production network. You use a real one, right? And I'm going to say this at fmc uh, events at lamely.com, right? And actually, you kind of can make this up the from address. But on the authentication one, we're going to authenticate to a real address. My, uh, now, this if you're using um, Gmail, this may not work for you. I have an enterprise business account, and then this is going to say who it goes to, Todd at Lamely.com. And so if not, what you'll do is you get an email from Google saying, hey, uh, man, you're trying to relay. Uh, I'm going to get this working. I think I spelled this wrong. And I'll start getting emails, assuming I get this right. And let's try that again. I want you to spend some time on this and make watch that I'm putting in emails. Notice it, it's saying message sent here, so that worked. Um, and make sure this works and goes to a group. Create a group that's going to get emails from events that you set up to be emailed. Um, now, the Af access control preferences the intrusion policy preferences down here and the NAP, which is my advanced IPS preprocessors. Uh, under these, now basically all it is, all three of these are the same, comment on rule change. You absolutely want to make this required. So what this does is if a user goes out and again, we're going to create users so no one logs in as admin. Um, and if a user goes out and makes a change in a policy, the access control, the IPS and the NAP, um, they have to leave a comment. Now, they might not write anything worthwhile, but it'll still record the name, date, and time. And that's what you want. However, during a, a class that I have or when I'm doing a cutover for a client, I'm going to disable these because they're more, they're, they're kind of a pain because you're constantly changing these policies. So I went out to a customer and we were doing a cutover for a week and uh, I was ended up disabling those because you're just changing these policies so much, right? And then when I left, though, I turned these all back on. Now, <clears throat> you can have, or before I left, I turned them all back on. So they had to do them, and that gave us a good audit. Now, you can come in here and create an HTTP server. You can generate a new uh, certificate server request or import one so you don't get that when you log in, you don't get that message. Um, be careful with this client one.
just be careful here. You might end up locking yourself out. Information doesn't help us. This is the same. Now with language though, uh, <clears throat> I recommend doing this uh, right before your vacation. This is, uh, this is the most fun. Now I've been in IT a long time, long before it was called IT. Uh, and uh, so we had to come up with some really weird uh, fun stuff. But one of the things is, there's. if you guys have noticed, if you've been in some older uh, older codes, it used to just be English and Japanese, went to six codes, English, Japanese, um, and Korean, and now they have Chinese as well. So there's four now. So before you go on vacation, just choose one and say save. I think that's Korean. We'll find out. I don't know. Anyways, it used to say English and Japanese. They're like, if you can't read this, maybe you shouldn't choose it. But I think this would be really fun for your friends when they come in on Monday because you do this Friday night before you leave. Ha ha, that would be a laugh, laugh riot, right? <laughs> uh, I can't find anyone to do it, but it sure sounds fun. All right, so we'll change that back. Anyways, so... <laughs> anyways, uh, <clears throat> management interfaces. Now this one, uh, sometimes I'll come in here, I put the wrong DNS or search domain in here. Now one of the things that it's telling me here is I communi communicate on TCP 8305 from the FMC with event data from my FTD boxes to my FMC and deploy from my FMCs to my boxes using TCP 8305. If you want to change those, it would be remote storage. Definitely do this when we do task management section. Uh, this is so critical, guys. We're gonna come in here and use. Now, I gotta tell you, I'm just telling you right now, um, NFS, SNA, SSH, you wanna use. SMB only uses version one. I don't even know somebody that uses version one anymore. So may, actually, maybe in 623 they changed that, but I haven't seen it yet. So we'll use one of these and we'll do this in our task management section. REST API, you can do some preferences there, but SNMP, there are only two more things here, guys. Hang in there, the section will be over. So I wanna configure this. You probably wanna do version three, guys, but there's some effort here, right? So if you're in production, this isn't an SNMP or syslog class, I recommend version three, but in this class, I'm just gonna use version two. And so I'm gonna come back here, because why? Because it's easy. So a lot of my customers just do that, because as I go out and I go, you guys are using version three, right? It's authentication, blah, 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 TCP. Ah, uh, yeah, no, we meant to. I hear that a lot. Anyways, <laughs> access list. So now we can come back now that that's done, version two with Firepower, I can add my NMS station. If you don't do this, you won't get uh, traps, right? So I'm gonna put in here 10, 11, 11, 250, and that's my 161. So we'll see that in there. You can't change this port number here. All right, so I'm gonna save that. So now my when I configure SNMP, which we still got another step to do for, for SNMP, that's two steps. Time doesn't just tell you how far it thinks you're off from your server. Time synchronization is what we want to do. Uh, and the rest of these we won't even look at. This is new, but uh, we can just use the help screen for those guys. Uh, in this case here, I don't really need to do anything but change this. Now, remember, I could have done this on that plat script, on that splash screen, right? Okay, uh, but I wanted to show you where you change it here. And that's all we care about on here. So guys, the, the system configuration, let's go back and take a look here. And one of the things is that uh, we installed the FMC, we installed our license, and then we configured our system config. In the next section, we're still not gonna bring in our, our FTD box. We're going to do our health policies and health alerts.